In a risk-off environment, the price of uh, asset classes, which you would normally want to hold for the next five years, which is to say precious metals as an example, gold and silver, get soft. Well, we're in a risk-off market. Uh, and I'm a guy, among other things, who likes some risky assets. <clears throat> if there's a situation where there's an asset class that I like, uh, junior resource stocks as an example, or emerging and frontier market stocks, where the overwhelming sentiment is negative. What that means is that sectors that I know extremely well are going to go from cheap to extremely cheap. Uh, you won't feel necessarily very good about your existing inventory, but to the extent that you add inventory, you're going to feel fantastic about it. But I said paradoxically that although uh, I cut my teeth and had my expertise in small cap and micro cap stocks, that they were overvalued relative to large cap and mid cap stocks. That's changing and it's changing very, very, very rapidly. So we're coming into a circumstance where the expertise that I built up over 50 years of investing and speculating uh, is those lessons uh, are going to be lessons that I'm <clears throat> able to employ. Uh, which is extremely attractive to me. Uh, volatility unnerves most people because most people only pay attention to the price of their investments. That price, in, that price information isn't worth anything if you don't have a sense of value. In other words, if a stock is selling for a dollar, uh, what does that mean? If you think it's worth two dollars, then the fact that it's selling for a dollar is cheap. If you think it's worth 50 cents, then the fact that it's selling for a dollar makes it expensive. Most people pay slavish attention to price information and have no opinion whatsoever as to value. So, of course, during periods of volatility, those people that don't have the courage of their convictions because they don't have convictions will make mistakes. Uh, and those mistakes will inure to the benefit of people who are psychologically and financially prepared. And I'm hoping I'm both. I think the funny money game can continue for a fairly substantial period of time. I don't think that the average investor and saver in the United States is as afraid as he or she is going to become. <laughs> uh, I believe that most people still believe that the big thinkers have their back. Uh, I'm not sure that I believe they have my back, but that doesn't matter. I don't make a market. I, I think in the very near term, we're probably set up for a technical uh, rebound. I think equities are oversold. Uh, I think bonds uh, may be oversold because I, although I think they offer a horrific value proposition, they are regarded by other people as safe havens, irrespective of the arithmetic. So I think in the very near term, we may see a rally. To me, that feels like a sucker rally. Uh, higher interest rates do two very bad things to debt and equity markets. The first is that they raise the issuer's cost of capital. You know, if you're somebody paying the prime rate and the prime rate is three, your cost of funds is three. And if the prime rate goes to four, your cost of funds went up by 33%. Obviously, your margin is the difference between your costs, including the cost of capital and what you sell your, what you sell your product for. But the other thing that increasing uh, interest rates do is they reduce the value of existing income streams. So if you own a U.S. 10-year treasury, which you bought uh, a year ago uh, with 125 basis point yield, uh, and today the U.S. 10-year treasury is selling for a 225 basis point yield, o over 10 years, what that means <clears throat> is uh, that your, your income stream is worth substantially less. Similarly, if you... Uh, if competing savings products uh, begin to yield appreciably more than the dividend yield of the S&P 500, as an example, there's going to be disintermediation uh, by income investors from equities uh, and from bond funds into other deposit products. So clearly, if you believe that interest rates are going to continue to rise, in the intermediate term, you believe that long-term bond markets and conventional equity markets are going to continue to suffer. I hate to sound arrogant, but I think focusing on when misses the point simply because you'll never know when. I think what you have to do is you have to live your life with the sense that there is no necessary answer to the when question. Uh, and you have to conduct your life in prudent fashion. Uh, despite the fact that you lose money having cash, 
you have to have some cash because cash will give you the tools and the courage to handle volatility. It, it sounds counterintuitive when you understand that, co- that cash is costing you money, but there's an opportunity cost associated with having cash. In a risk-off environment, the price of uh, asset classes, which you would normally want to hold for the next five years, which is to say precious metals as an example, gold and silver, get soft. And if you don't have the courage of your conviction, it's easy when the gold price falls from 1900 to 1800 saying it's going down and selling it, really truly snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, uh, mistaking uh, volatility for arithmetic, uh, which is a mistake. Uh, Similarly, if the S&P 500 is going lower, but if you have specific knowledge around a company and why that company is attractively priced, the fact that a company, that is to say an investment that you know well and feel good about, is becoming less and less less expensive is a benefit to you, uh, not a cost to you. And if you buy a stock that you think is worth, uh, let's use a big cap stock, let's say you think something is worth $50. Uh, and the stock is selling at $40, and you're, pr- you're planning on holding the stock for some period of time longer than a long weekend because you believe that the company's prospects are such that it will do well over the next five or 10 years, the fact that it fell from 50 to 40 is a benefit to you. If you can't think in those terms, the best thing to do is to become extremely conservative, which is to say hold cash, hold precious metals, uh, and have very, very, very low expectations. <laughs> or maybe simply pay off your debt and hunker down. Uh, that isn't what I'm proposing to do. I'm proposing to take advantage of the situation as opposed to being taken advantage of by the situation. Jake, my gut feeling is that the market goes lower, uh, but there are some values that are so compelling that I can't help myself. Uh, I remember uh, about two years ago, maybe a little longer, after the COVID thing shut down travel uh, and where the greatest thinker in the world with regards to energy uh, was a 16-year-old Swedish teenager, Greta Thornburg, uh, where uh, Exxon got thrown out of the Dow 30 and the price of Exxon absolutely collapsed. And I remember Exxon was selling at a 12.6 or 12.7% dividend yield. That was very obvious to me that people were going to drive their cars for the next 30 years that Exxon wasn't going out of business and that uh, a sub-zero price of oil wasn't going to last. And I made a critical mistake. I thought Exxon was going to go lower. And I missed the opportunity, uh, at least for 45 days, uh, of buying uh, the best asset allocator in a business that I knew well because I thought it might get cheaper. I'm not making that mistake now. Uh, Where companies are selling at substantial discounts to what I believe the net present value of their free cash flows are going to be over the next five to 10 years, or when they're selling at big discounts to what I think the risk adjusted uh, probable value of their assets are, I'm going ahead uh, and buying stocks. I have been thus far unsuccessful, unfortunately, in negotiating private placement financings in micro cap equities, because the management teams at those companies believe that the market is going to magically get better in the near term uh, and make other sources of capital more competitive with me. But Jake, I'm highly confident that in 2022, the people who are playing chicken with capital markets when they need capital are going to lose and I'm going to win.